What was the hardest part of quitting your dream job? Sitting in a dimly lit tech lab, surrounded by prototypes of wearable health monitors, and realizing that one of them had quietly killed someone, and no one in the company planned to tell the public, not even the family. I'd wanted to work in medical tech since I was 12. I watched my mom struggle with epilepsy her whole life, and I dreamed of building something that could predict and prevent her seizures. So when I landed a job at Unoya Health, a startup in San Francisco building AI-driven neural sensors that could detect your body's stress patterns before you even feel them, I thought I'd made it. We were changing lives. We were saving them. At least that's what I believed. On my third week, I was reviewing user data logs when I noticed something off. One device, labeled beta unit number 37, had a sudden spike in electrical feedback, then zero activity. I checked the ID tag. It belonged to a 26-year-old clinical trial volunteer named Mateo from San Diego. There was no follow-up appointment, no new logs, just silence. I asked my supervisor Rachel about it. She paused for too long before saying, oh, Mateo dropped out. He moved. We couldn't reach him, but something felt wrong. That feedback spike was abnormal, like the device had misfired. I requested access to incident reports. I was denied. That night, I ran a local news search. I found an article. Local man dies suddenly at home. Family Family says he was part of an experimental health trial. It was Mateo. I went cold. The timeline matched exactly. I brought it to Rachel again. Her voice was flat this time. This isn't something you want to dig into. Trust me. The next day, my company email was locked for 12 hours. They called it a server error. I started documenting everything offline, taking photos of internal memos, recording conversations. I learned that Mateo's death had triggered an internal review, but no pause in trials, no warning to other participants. The wearable was glitching when used on people with certain medications in their system. A small variable, but it could cause heart irregularities. The company knew. They'd buried the data. Why? Because we were one month away from launching Unoya S3, our first mass market version, with deals already signed with three major insurance providers. Delaying the launch would cost them millions. Rachel said to me in a hallway, do you want to be responsible for sinking the company? This is how the industry works. People assume risk. We just manage it quietly. I couldn't sleep. I kept seeing Mateo's photo from the article. His mom quoted saying, he just wanted to help. He believed in technology. And I had the proof. I had the malfunction logs, internal emails, and QA reports flagged with high priority warnings that were never addressed. But blowing the whistle meant I'd never work in this field again. I'd be sued, blacklisted, possibly lose everything. So I I called my old professor from undergrad, Dr. Liu, who now consulted for the FDA. I told him everything. He listened silently for 20 minutes, then just said, send me everything tonight. The next morning, I submitted my resignation. Rachel just looked at me and asked, so you're choosing your conscience over your career? I said, I'm choosing human lives over your launch date. Three weeks later, the story broke. Tech startup under federal investigation after trial participant death. Unoya Health's IPO was frozen. The S3 launch was canceled. Three executives were subpoenaed. The FDA ordered a recall of every unit currently in circulation. And Mateo's mom finally got a phone call from someone who told her the truth. I'll probably never work in biotech again, but last week I got a letter in the mail, handwritten. Thank you for not letting my son die in silence, Rosa. That was the hardest part of quitting my dream job, knowing it had become someone else's nightmare.